The regular season is over for Sun Devils basketball, and all that's left now is the Pac-12 tournament. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last Sunday that we will have talking about Sun Devils basketball as the team is done with their regular season, mercifully, might I add. And at a minimum, one more game remains. And in reality, it's probably one more game, which will be Wednesday in the Pac-12 tournament against Utah. The Sun Devils finished 11th in the total standings for the Pac-12, and yeah, it was it was it was an ugly, ugly season. This was from start to finish, and we still have at least one more game. But this was just a bad season, and there was a lot of stuff that went wrong for Arizona State, and it was absolutely highlighted in these two games against USC and UCLA. Let's talk about the USC game first. USC. Ugh. There were there were a lot of moments where I felt they should have been able to pull away with this game, but the problem was USC was just shooting hot. They went uh, twelve of twenty four from deep, forty five point eight percent from the field, and they made twenty five of their thirty free throws. As per usual, ASU was out rebounded in the game. Pretty considerably, too. Uh, 32 rebounds for the Trojans, 22 for Arizona State. It was pretty much what we're accustomed to seeing. It, it wasn't anything that is different for ASU. And, I mean, there were some strong performances. I mean, Jose Perez uh, put up 25 points. He actually went a perfect 11 for 11 off of the foul line. Uh, Frankie Collins had a decent little game for himself, 11 points. Uh, he did unfortunately foul out towards the end of the game. And that's that was when you knew you were like, yeah, I know this game's done. We're not making a comeback. Once you take the best player off the court for ASU, it's over. It's done. Signed, sealed with a stamp on it. ASU had every opportunity to win this game, and they didn't. And again, that was just something that we have seen from this team all year, and the same warts came up in this game. And outside of uh, Jose Perez and Frankie Collins, um, it was a strong night from Adam Miller, who was able to shoot 50% from the field. He put up 18 points because he got on the foul line uh, 10 times. ASU was very successful in getting to the foul line, and they were actually very successful in converting their fouls. They went 22 of 30 on the line. It, was, it, it wasn't it was something that we have seen from this team. They are not a, a program in 2023-24 season that was able to make the most of those opportunities. They didn't make their free throws, and it cost them a lot of games. This was one of those games that would have been closer if you had made... I don't know, 80% or something like that. But for ASU to be able to make 73.3%, that's a huge win. And to have such good performances from Jose Perez on the line, 11 for 11, Adam Miller, 7 of 10. Even Frankie Collins went 2 for 2, which he's probably the worst free throw shooter on this team right now. You, You had a good opportunity to win this game. And unfortunately, one of the biggest problems is the classic, you live and die by the three, and Arizona State was killed deep. 
while USC made 50% of their deep shots, including a six of eight performance for Boogie Ellis, ASC was three for 16. That was the ultimate difference maker in this game was ASU's inability to hit the deep ball. And in a, in a modern basketball, I don't want to call it culture, but with where you're at with basketball today, you have to be able to hit three point shots or you're just not going to win games. And that's been the Achilles heel of the Sun Devils all year. They have not been a consistent team shooting from deep. They have not had a consistent shooter from deep. They've had guys who aren't afraid to take those shots like Alonzo Gaffney and Adam Miller, but neither of them are super duper effective in it. And that's where you just got killed. And in this game, that's where you got killed. Adam Miller was one of five from deep. Jemiah Neal was one of four. Frankie Collins was one of three. They were just not able to take the, the, the most of those opportunities. Like, even if you shoot 30%, I mean, this game is that much closer. Even if you are converting some more of your free throws, you, you could have won this game. That's where ASU was at here against USC. And while this was a frustrating loss, I would tell you that the UCLA loss was every bit as frustrating for me. It was more frustrating. And I actually think that it was the worst game that the Sun Devils played in the 2023-24 season. We'll talk about it in just a second. This is the Lockdown Sun Devils podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick TV that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies, TV episodes, and more as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball that's coming up, by the way, or the college basketball tournament, which is also right around the corner, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the sports world. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should trust me on this. Turn in to learn more. Visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Also want to talk to you about our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find the professionals that are right for the role. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives access to the professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is so easy, in fact, that when you have that many qualified candidates, it, it doesn't get much better than that, guys. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats that they may not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier and even launch a new feature that helps you write job descriptions making the process easier and quicker. Two and a half million businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Again, I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Let's wrap up today's conversation, taking a look at the UCLA game. And what I said was the most frustrating game of the year for the Sun Devils. 
they were completely in control in the first half. Now, they were streaky. They were up and down throughout the game. There were stretches where they couldn't score points, and there were stretches where they took advantage of UCLA. But after the first 20 minutes, you went into halftime feeling very confident that ASU was going to be able to pull out a win, and they were going to be able to finish 15 and 16, and they were not going to finish 11th in the conference. Well, that wasn't the case. Because the second half rolls around, and ASU can't buy a bucket. ASU put up a whopping 16 points in the second half. And quite frankly, I you, you would have fooled me if you told me 16. I would have believed you if you told me it was under 10. They were that abysmally bad in the second half. And I mean, they just weren't hitting anything. They... Oh my God, the free throws. That was the worst part. You you didn't get to the line in the first half. And then the second half, five of 14, five of 14, 35.7% from the free throw line. I, I can't even begin to describe how embarrassing that is that you, you just, you can't convert them. And it was, it was a team effort where guys struggled. It wasn't one particular guy that wasn't able to make their free throws. It was a collective effort from everybody that got on the court. And the shooting wasn't great. 18 of 48, 37.5% from the field. Uh, to put that in perspective, ASU was around 50% or against USC. Then you drop under 40%, under 38%. 27.3% from deep, 6 of 22. Like, they they were not getting it done. The first half, Adam Miller was on fire. He went 3 for 3 from deep. He was shooting all over the place. He couldn't miss. He proceeded to miss 8 more 3-point attempts. He went 3 of 11 from deep, 5 of 16 from the field. He led the team in scoring with 13, and almost all of it came in the first half. That just can't happen. When you consider that Adam Miller is probably your most talented shooter on the team and one of the most talented players, period, you need a consistent effort from him. And Adam Miller is one of those guys that I look at him and right now it feels like when he's on, he's on. And when he's off, he's off. There doesn't seem to really be an in-between for Adam Miller. And again, that's so frustrating because you look at him and you go, this kid's got it. When he is dialed in, he is as good a shooter as you're going to find. Frankie Collins had a frustrating game. He only shot the ball six times. He made three of them, but he went three of seven on the line. He was just not a consistent factor. He turned the ball over six times. That was the other thing. ASU was so sloppy. Like It just felt like they were either trying to do too much or they just were not in sync in this game. Because everybody was just playing bad basketball yesterday. The only the only player who actually played pretty consistent throughout the game was Alonzo Gaffney. And even Gaffney only had five points, and he went two of six from uh, the field and one of three from deep. But yet, I saw Alonzo Gaffney play last night, and I felt like he might have been the best player on the court. And he definitely got better as the season went on. I was one of his harshest critics this year. Absolutely will own that. He definitely got better as the season went on when he became much more of an assist guy and a distributor and somebody who wasn't just forcing shots. That was the case last night. Is he, was, he wasn't afraid to pass the ball around. He grabbed three assists. He got three rebounds. That's another thing. ASU out-rebounded UCLA. I don't... Has that happened this year? I don't know if it has. If it has, it's been less than five times. ASU had this game. They had the game, and they they just couldn't finish. And it was upsetting. It was very disappointing. It was borderline embarrassing to see how strong they came out in the first half and just to disappear in the second half. One more storyline I want to mention is Jose Perez did not play last night 
he actually opted to leave the program to pursue, pursue excuse me, pro opportunities. Now, I don't know what that means, and I'm not here to speculate. It's not my place to speculate at this point in time. I am going to wait until there's more information out. I don't have any thoughts about it right now. I will be totally, totally transparent there. I, I don't know what to think because I'm absolutely somebody that, and I've been on record for this, take care of yourself, take care of your, of your future. So when it comes to football, sit out bowl games. I don't care. Like you need to take care of yourself before you worry about meaningless games. And that may have been Jose Perez as he looked at this as a meaningless game. And he wanted to uh, just start preparing himself for his future, whether that's in the NBA or whether that's anywhere else. There's tons of opportunities for him as somebody who does play physical and somebody who's able to uh, play and initiate con contact. And you don't have a lot of players who play as physical as Jose Perez does. So I think there is a potential future for him. But as far as this goes, I don't have any thoughts right now. And as the situation unfolds, I'm sure we'll get some more information and then I'll be able to come up with more concrete, not so, not ideas, but I'll have more concrete thoughts about the situation. But right now, I got nothing. You got to wait and see what happens. But did you guys watch the game last night? First of all, there were some good UFC fights. I know that. Uh, what did you think of the regular season finale for the Sun Devils and what ended up being the final regular season game of the Pac-12 tournament. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to watch the game on Wednesday against Utah. As always, I appreciate you for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. A special shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. One more time, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. There is just one more game for Arizona State Sun Devils basketball. Hopefully, they can make a run. You know, I'd still love to make a tournament and somehow win everything, but there is a minimum of one more game. I encourage you guys to give the players your support. Even though it's been a down year, they still deserve all of the love that you guys can provide for them. So hopefully, I'll see you guys to talk about some more basketball later this week. Until then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun